What is going on guys? So today we are going to be talking about the future of the Elder Scrolls Online. I've played this game since launch on console back in 2015 with several thousands of hours of gameplay with my YouTube channel actually starting with this game. I owe a lot of my channel success to Elder Scrolls and without it, I may have actually never started the YouTube channel. Now this video will be an honest take on my outlook and the people I think I represent. I enjoy ESO very much. And if I have a few negative things to say about it, it doesn't mean I don't like the game. It's because I wish it would improve and get better. With that being said, I am a PVP player through and through. I do PVE on occasion, but it's not really something I enjoy too much. Now, I want to get this out of the way first because I know someone will comment this trying to debunk my whole entire thesis for this video. ESO is a casual game. PVE content, if that is your thing, is one of the best out there. The questing, lore, and exploring are all top notch. Got voice acting, costume dying, raiding, dungeoning, social clubs, all of that is amazing. But once you get past the first 100 hours of gameplay and you decide you want to become an in-game player, this is where things start to go downhill. And this is not only true for the PvE community, but is much, much worse for the PvP community. Getting right to the point, ESO's future is looking dim for the in-game type of PvP player. The people who have played and supported this game for years, there's only a few of us left. Why is that? Most games have this issue in retention rate of veteran players by focusing their efforts to bring in the new players while also simultaneously alienating the longtime player base. This happens for a whole slew of reasons on all types of different games, but this one issue that pertains to ESO is the shift in prioritization of Zenimax's goals. This overarchs everything that I will be talking about in this video, but this is something that we need to understand as consumers. ESO in its inception was built for players like you and me. But now, based on the timeline of Zenimax's content releases, we are no longer the ideal player. And is why PvP doesn't get any love, because we aren't the target audience. This shift started all the way back when animation cancelling was nerfed and cast times on ultimates was added. So that newer and experienced players didn't have to get good, and this extends all the way to today with a casual audience getting the ESO card game, while the PvP community has to sit and wait for the better performance days. Now this card game could be the greatest card game of all time, but this is an appeal to the PvP population, hence why most of us are disappointed in the game's content and direction so far over the past few years. Which leads me to my first reason on why the PvP population is dying is the lack of content. There is simply nothing new to do at the end game PvP level. Once you've done a lot of PvP in Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, Dueling, and Imperial City, there's nothing left to do other than the same repetitive process over and over again. If someone was in a coma in 2017 and they played ESO and they woke up today in 2022, they would wake up still thinking it is 2017. You'd be like, how is that even possible? Because there has been nothing major added to PVP in five years, half of a decade, let that sink in. We have had BGs, Cyrodiil, Dueling, and Imperial City. All of this content was in the game at the start of 2017. At that time, PvP was absolutely amazing. We had two PvP-focused updates, and there was really no better time to play ESO when Marwin released. But ever since that point in time, the game has consistently died off slowly due to all sorts of reasons like balance, performance issues, new games coming out. But from my perspective and being a content creator and seeing you know, the, the likes of Cypher, King Richard, Fang Rush, Lefty Lucy, all of these guys, there is nothing new to do and doing the same things over and over again eventually become very boring and you can't get excited about anything else. And the lack of enthusiasm can definitely bleed over into the content I or others make. The PvP YouTube space right now has been dwindled down to covering patch notes, making meta builds and talking about game balance where our concerns were never heard. Zenimax's idea for PvP content is selling a pipe dream of better days of performance, keeping us on a leash, saying it's almost here, we're working on it, yet there's nothing to show for it. This again stems from my initial premise is us PvPers aren't a focus anymore. Therefore, we get the short end of the stick with everything. And if we somehow stay around to buy the next DLC, just in hopes of getting better performance days, that's all that matters. They say we can't add any new PvP content like game modes and battlegrounds, 2v2 duels, or do any new events in Cyrodiil until game performance is fixed. And this is another big pillar on why the future of the Elder Scrolls Online is bleak. Performance for the most part 
in the game's history hasn't been the best. It has had some rocky edges through the years, but if my memory serves me correctly, back in 2017 to 2018 ESO, in the main campaign where all the Masters groups are, it was actually playable. Yes, it was laggy, but Skidderlight wasn't as horrendous as it is now. But fast forward just a few short months, I believe it was right after Wrathstone first launched, me and Pink and a few friends tried to go into Lagcoast, and the skill delay since then has been the exact same for three years and has yet to be improved upon. Try going into Cyrodiil during prime time, your abilities will have two to three seconds skill delay minimum, where your ping spikes up in the hundreds where no abilities work or go off. Now this isn't just affecting the main PvP campaign, it has actually bled over into Black Reach, where you can have one or two bars of each alliance, and your abilities don't work where there's a keep fight across the map and you're actually at your base. Now it isn't as bad there, but it still has issues even when the population isn't high. And the performance issues aren't just directly affecting PvP anymore either. These issues have bled into trials and other PvE areas in ESO. Now it isn't as bad, but at one point in time it was really only Cyrodiil that had all of these issues. The only thing keeping most of us here, in my opinion, has been the combat. When this game works and your abilities go off, there is no better MMO on the market. The action combat is better than any other game out there. And even this has been affected by ZeniMax. You have animation canceling being nerfed, cast times on ultimates, and now the newest thing is the EverQuest of hybridization fulfilling the play the way you want with one-sided game balance. This is another issue. It may seem like a great idea on the surface, even I was fooled about the play the way you want. What all this does, especially in a competitive environment in PvP, is make everyone play the exact same. This has recently came into account with the release of the Ascending Tide DLC in Legacy of the Bretons. But it has been in the works slowly but surely over the past year, with all of these insane meta shifting changes and yo-yo patches every three months. This seems to be what Zoss has been going for. With all these broken sets Zoss released like Dark Convergence and Hrothgar, to proc set scaling and now to everyone using Arresto staff in PvP, because of the hybrid scaling of abilities. In order to understand this, you really have to understand the ins and outs of the combat. Basically, in short, everyone in PvP is a healer now. Everyone just back bars the rest of the staff with a radiant regeneration and can stack several heals in groups. The balance of this game wasn't so bad before, when only magic abilities had access to the restoration staff. But now, stamina builds can be more effective healers and have higher burst damage than a magic build can all while also being faster and more nimble. Now there is more nuance of this for sure, but that's just the idea. And everyone in the PvP community said this was a bad idea, and yet the changes went to the live server with zero adjustments. And all of these things will get nerfed and altered eventually, but only after months and months of balance changes, just to get back to square one and where we were before. Where PvP yet again is boiled down to skill and class balance changes, and that's it. We were in a tank year in high healing meta before, and people were hard to kill then, and now it will be much, much worse. In PvE, I think these changes, while it homogenizes most playstyles and makes everyone a hybrid build, this isn't such a big deal, because if you were just questing and doing normal dungeons, you think this is great, but for the end game population, this might be the nail in the coffin. Another reason why ESO's future isn't looking good is there are other games that are just more appealing to play right now, especially from a PvP perspective. You have Lost Ark, Black Desert, New World, and Elden Ring, just to name a few. Sure, all of these games aren't perfect and are different than ESO. The competition has drove me and many others to try out Elden Ring, and I think some of us really enjoy it. One of the main reasons ESO has held a solid steady player base, especially on console, is there really haven't been any good games to come out. ESO is a great game, but with Elden Ring's release, there is no denying the impact it has had. Playing ESO just doesn't feel the same anymore. Now I'm not going to ramble on and on comparing the two games. I can do a separate video for that if you guys would be interested. Definitely let me know down in the comment section below. The Elden Ring PvP is very very fun and has similar aspects to ESO which is why I find it interesting. There's all different kinds of builds you can make and play, the PvE content is actually engaging and fun and difficult. But the games aside, I think this is something very important and I actually noticed it today. There have been some big issues affecting Elden Ring PvP, especially exploiting for about a week now, and 95% of these issues have been patched today, just three weeks after launch day back in February. And most of the exploits were discovered actually one to two weeks after launch. 
We have waited months and months for basic simple fixes on ESO, like blue screen issues, craft bag bugs, and sadly enough, there are still game breaking combat bugs like Dragon Leap and Fossilize and many more skills that have been yet to be fixed for well over a year. There is just a night and day difference between the response and the communication between the two game companies. These are some of the most important issues I personally experienced and know many feel the same way I do. I still love ESO and enjoy this game very much, but I can't be oblivious to reality and keep lying to myself and you guys saying that I think one day ESO will improve. I think we should take the game for what it is, play where performance isn't terrible and try and have the best fun that we can and have an overall healthy game experience while checking out other types of games for our own sanity sake. I'm not saying ESO as a whole is dying in any means, but I think the PvP population is almost on its deathbed. And even if Zoss can somehow fix performance, I just think people have moved on to other games and won't return and just leave ESO in the rearview mirror. I personally will still cover content on this game for a long while. Ascending Tide releases on console very soon, and I will try it out and see what is happening. I'll be releasing builds and guides and keeping up to date on all the big changes. But moving forward, I will cover both games, Elden Ring and ESO. Here over the past few weeks, Elden Ring has made me honestly a better content creator. So this brief break, me playing Elden Ring will ultimately lead to me having better videos for you guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.